What is up YouTube? So the new batch is back. We're talking about our first brand new TV show for this season of the new batch and uh, it's a doozy. Let's talk about Stephen King's Castle Rock. Now, when I said Stephen King's Castle Rock, that was a little bit of a misnomer. This is not actually a Stephen King story. Uh, instead, it is actually executive produced by J.J. Abrams, a creator that I absolutely love. Uh, with one of the main, and this is the reason that I was so interested in the show, one of the main writers in the writer's room was Mark Bernardin, who I love. I think he's a phenomenal writer. I think that every project that he touches really seems to go that extra mile, not to mention the fact that I love him as a co-host on Fat Man and on Batman. But the two main showrunners of this series are Sam Shaw and Dustin Tomlinson. And, well, now let's get right down to it. This is a original series for Hulu, and it premiered on Wednesday night, July 25th, with not one, not two, but three episodes. So I was expecting to watch this show, sit down, do my review on this, and I was really excited to do so. I've been excited for Castle Rock for quite some time now, but that didn't happen because I, 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 I finished it and there's another one. And I'm like, what the hell? I didn't know that there were two of them. So I sat down and I watched it. And after that happened to me, I'm like, oh my God, it's happening again. This is happening to me all over the place because a third episode's there. So I sit down and had to watch that. So I was emotionally too tired to record the night that I watched this. So I'm recording the following morning. And um, initial thoughts of this series, oh my God. The, I wanna talk about atmosphere at first. This show has atmosphere like nobody's business. Stephen King's stories in general tend to deal with a lot of atmosphere. They establish a location and they establish your relationship to your characters, prota uh, main protagonists, main antagonists, and supporting players. Um, that is absolutely the case in the early 90s adaptation of It. It is definitely the case with the 2016 film version of It. It was the case in Storm of the Century back in the, uh, I believe, late 90s that show came out. Um, that was the case in even going back to the very first adaptation with Carrie, which I'm pretty sure was referenced in this show. We'll touch off on a few of the references here in just a few minutes. But my point is Stephen King intellectual properties are very, very good at setting the scene, setting the tone and um, just creating that atmosphere, that feeling of dread if you if the show requires it, that feeling of mystery if that show requires it. and. Castle Rock has both. This show is definitely a mystery box. And uh, to be fair, executive produced by J.J. Abrams, what more can you really expect? But it also has moments that just stood out to me in absolute horror. Um, moments where I was just so completely unsettled where I almost wanted to turn the light on. I'm not gonna lie, the show does follow a Stephen King trend of tending to go on about a bitch a little bit. Um, there were some scenes that tended to drag more than others. Overall, however, those scenes were easily, not forgettable, but dismissible due to a lot of the other scenes that were in this sh in, in the first three episodes. And I can only imagine that we're gonna be getting far, far more going forward. So I would, my initial reactions to this show were extremely positive. It actually probably is better that I'm recording it the next day because I had a little bit of time to sit and process. If I recorded it last night, I probably would have been like, oh my God, it was, it was an absolutely amazing show. Um, and it was an amazing show. I absolutely loved it. But it took a few minutes for me to step, to step back and kind of extrapolate my thoughts a little bit because there were a couple of faults. Um, like I said, some of the pacing is a bit off, and I will also say that the first three episodes, none of them really stood out as an, oh my god, this is it episode. And lots of TV series have been having those lately, and it's possible that maybe 
myself possibly more than other people, but audiences as a whole just come to expect that. And it's not going to be the case every time. Daredevil had that second episode where you, we had that amazing hallway fight sequence. This, this show, Castle Rock, doesn't exactly have that episode, at least not as of yet. But what it does have is a series and collection of moments. And those moments stick with you, both the moments that make you be like, all right, this is awesome, and moments that kind of stick with you long after you want them to. Yeah. So what is this show even about? Well, to be honest with you, I didn't really know going forward. Castle Rock is a town that is the main setting or at least referenced in lots of different stories and adaptations of Stephen King intellectual properties. So I knew that we were in for a shared universe type of situation and as a matter of fact that's kind of what it was uh, plugged as is a Stephen King shared universe show. So I didn't know what we were going to be going into. I mean is Andy Dupre going to be showing up? You know maybe back and like running Shawshank now or something like that. Is Shawshank going to be in it? Shawshank is in it. Um, are we going to be seeing like the reverberations of th what happened with Carrie? You know, are, are we going to be getting, you know, characters that we were introduced to throughout plenty of other Stephen King stories? Yes and no. Uh, Castle Rock stands on its own as its very own piece of property, but it does have Easter eggs, callbacks, and references to, I counted at least half a dozen Stephen King stories and adaptations. So to me, at least as of right now, they're kind of filling in the void. They're kind of um, beefing up the story. They're adding a little bit of flavor, a little spice, if you will. Uh, but it is itself a, and a very original story. So this show centers around Henry Deaver, who's a young adopted kid who disappeared and then reappeared under really strange circumstances back in 1991, which also coincided with the untimely death of his adopted father. So Henry's now a lawyer representing death row inmates in Texas, and he returns home to represent this really creepy, like, mid-20s, early 30s looking dude named only as the inmate in the show up to this point. And by the way... The inmate is p played by Bill Skarsgård, who also played Pennywise, so that in itself is a reference. Um, and this inmate was discovered in a cage in the basement of Shawshank Penitentiary. And when I say in a cage, I mean in a cage, not a cell, like a, a lion's cage in the basement. No lights, no sounds, no nothing. Complete solitary confinement. And yet, despite the fact that they find a box of his nail clippings, he seems to be in relatively somewhat decent health. I mean, you can tell that there's something wrong with his eyes and his skin is incredibly pale. You can tell he hasn't seen outside in a, quite some time, but this is one of the central mysteries of the show is who is this kid? How long has he been in the basement? Why is he in the basement, in this cage, in a prison? Um, it's one of the main central uh, mysteries of this show. So this kid has absolutely no personal history and seems to have been hidden there for the good of humanity by the prison's previous warden, Dale Lacey, played by Terry O'Quinn, who is a veteran of J.J. Abrams' intellectual properties. This show also happens to have in it Molly Strand, played by Melanie Linsky, who you may or may not remember from Two and a Half Men, um, and several other people of note, including Sissy Spacek and Francis Conroy. So now to get to the meat of this and answer you guys' question, you know, how many references were in this? Well, it turns out a whole lot, actually. Um, I didn't actually sit down and make a list of all of them, but coming off the top of my head, You've got the opening credits, which referenced Cujo, which referenced the Green Mile, which referenced um, the body, a.k.a. Stand By Me. There was also a bit of dialogue that referenced both Stand By Me slash the body and um, Cujo. I'm pretty sure there are a couple of references to The Shining in there as well. One of the characters whose name I don't remember off the top of my head, and I don't have her in my notes for 
inexcusable reasons because I absolutely love her. She played Tessa in Suburgatory <clears throat> and was also the lead in Evil Dead, the remake. Um, I cannot remember her name for the life of me, but it's on the screen right here. And if by whatever chance you are watching this, I'm so sorry, I actually love you. But her name is Jackie Torrance, which obviously has to be a nod to Jack Torrance from The Shining. Not to mention Molly's ability. Um, turns out she's an empath and a bit of a mind reader, and by the by the appearances of, of it, a touch no as well. So she has the ability to sense and feel and see the emotions and thoughts of other people as well as kind of see glimpses into the past by touching objects that are linked to the past in some way. There's got to be a way to describe what that is. She called it shiny. It all makes sense, man! There's another Stephen King reference right there. The Shining twice. Uh, what else did I see? Um, we got Cujo. We got the body. We got The Shining, which also by osmosis gives us Dr. Sleep. Bill Skarsgård obviously gives us Pennywise the Dancing Clown. Um, there was a mouse in the prison. I'm pretty sure that gives us Green Mile in there as well. There was this other reference that I spoke with one of my friends about where Obviously, the parallel to Children of the Corn was there. It was during this game where the kids are playing like judge, jury, and executioner. And he saw Children of the Corn there. And to be fair, so did I. So did my wife. But I also saw it as much more of a reference to Rule of Rose. This incredibly, weirdly, it's a weird thing to say, but underground PS2 game for um, like 2002, I want to say. Um, if you have not played this game and you're into horror games, you, it's a must play. Uh, if you can find a copy because they're stupid expensive. It was banned in a lot of places. But my point is I saw a lot of parallels with the group of the aristocrats and these kids, the way they were playing. And it was wholly unsettling, man. This is one of the scenes that I was talking about that just kind of stuck with me. Um, that's not going to be leaving my psyche anytime soon. So would I recommend this show? Oh, hell yes. If you're in the mood for horror, um, if you're in the mood for atmosphere, if you're in the mood for a thriller, uh, for a suspense show, this is the show for you, man. This seems to be a J.J. Abrams show by way of, let's say, Channel Zero on sci-fi. It has all the atmosphere you want. It has some very good scares. It does have a couple of jump scares which actually earn their shit. Um, it's not just crazy loud music and a cat jumping out. No, some of the jump scares in this show earn it. And I respect that. I think jump scares are incredibly cheap except when they're officially earned, and this show does earn them. But I keep going back to the tone and the atmosphere. These showrunners, and I'm, I, honestly, I'm giving a lot of credit to Mark Bernardin on this as well. They found a way to make the town of Castle Rock into a character. And that's something that is not easily achievable, to turn a town into a character. It's been done in most adaptations in the video games, and frankly, in the first film of the Silent Hill franchise. It was obviously done in Sex in the City in uh, at least the first movie and the entire series. It was done in the setting of the prison in Oz, but it's not exactly the easiest thing to do to turn a town and a community into a character in and of itself. And Castle Rock achieved this, probably in the first episode, but definitely in the first three. So, there it is, folks. If this sounds like something that you might be looking for, jump on Hulu and watch this right now. If you don't have Hulu, get a free trial and watch this show right now. Um, it's absolutely incredible. It's going to be on every Wednesday night. I think that there are 10 episodes coming out, so we've got another seven weeks of Castle Rock coming to us. So what did you guys think? Was this show awesome? Did you not really like it so much? Are you guys going to be checking it out, or are you going to pass on it? Let me know in the comments down below. Uh, let me know what other shows you guys want us to touch on, because we've got a small team just like last year, and we're going to be hitting a whole bunch more shows. And I really enjoy doing these reviews for you guys. So let me know in the comments down below what you guys are thinking. 
like and subscribe for this video. It helps us out a ton and it also appeases the ancient old gods of YouTube so that the algorithm does not make me fade into general obscurity. And with that, until the next time guys, I'm Robbie. Take care.